All right, welcome back to Bethlehem Baptist Church for teen class. I'm excited about today's lesson. Uh, we've got some fun stuff we want to uh, start out with. I hope you were able to join us, um, I guess that would have been yesterday afternoon for our virtual teen activity. We had a blast doing that. I uh, hope you had as much fun as I did. Um, I know the Quilted Northern team smoked the Charmin team in um, Is That in the Bible? And then uh, the other game we played, which was Home Hunt, kind of like an in-house scavenger hunt. The girls demolished the guys. Um, so guys out there in the youth group, make sure you're on there. We'll do it again, not this coming up Saturday, but in two weeks. Um, so on April 11th, we'll be doing that again, uh, probably at one o'clock at the same time as well. So uh, you can go ahead and plan on that and we'll give out more instructions as that gets closer. Um, so we're gonna start out today uh, just to making a couple announcements. Um, the first thing is is uh, we're gonna have the question and answer time with pastor tonight uh, for tonight's service. So that's gonna be really exciting. Um, if you had questions and you got them in by Friday afternoon, um, that then he'll probably answer your question. But it'll be an exciting time, so really tune in and listen to that, as well as the morning service we're about to have here in just a couple minutes. Um, and then let's go ahead and pray. We took up some prayer requests, so just remember to pray uh, for one another in the youth group, as well as people here in the church. Um, so let's go ahead and go Lord in prayer, and then we're gonna get started this morning. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for all that you do for us, Lord. Just thank you for the beautiful day that you've given to us, God. And uh, Lord, just thank you so much for letting us wake up and that we could come to your house and worship you, Lord. And so I just pray that you be with the, every teenager that's listening right now. Maybe it's a parent or even uh, just someone else that's not either a parent or a teenager, Lord. Um, and they're listening right now. God, I pray that you would just um, comfort them, Lord. I pray that you would just um, help them to, to realize how much you love them, God, and that you have everything under control. There's nothing that we need to worry about just to put our faith and trust in you. And God, I pray that you would just be with uh, all the students, Lord, as they're not in school. Uh, Lord, I pray you be with their parents, that they wouldn't kill them, God, and just but be with them financially, Lord, through this time, um, as some of them may have lost their jobs. And so, God, I just pray you be with them. Pray that you just be with our church people, God. Uh, some we, we do have some uh, senior saints, God, in our church, and so, Lord, I pray that you would just especially be with them, uh, but be with all those in our church, God. Uh, pray that you just be with all the Sunday school classes that are going on right now, God, that you would speak to hearts. Um, Lord, I pray that you would be with our country, Lord, be with our leaders and the ones that are uh, really overseeing, even in the CDC um, and just over the coronavirus task force, God, that you would just help us um, and help them, God, that you would give them wisdom on what decisions to make. And uh, God, help us give us an attitude that would be uh, listening to those those wise com uh, com uh, requests, God. And so I pray that you would just be with them. I pray that you'd be with our class this morning, God. I pray that you would just use me. I know there's nothing special about me, Lord, but I know that there is everything special about your word, God. I pray that we would just listen attentively. God, that we would grow. And uh, Lord, just thank you so much for all you do for us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, I hope um, you are excited for our game today. I know I am. Uh, I'm going to explain it here in just a moment, uh, but it's called Game of Threes. And it, if you look at a triangle there, if you didn't know this, this will help you on any geometry test that you'll probably have to take in your future, or maybe you've already taken it in your past and you missed the question. But um, there's a, a three sides on every triangle. So basically this game, we're gonna see what do these three things have in common. And so um, the first one here is an example. Uh, so you have note, pocket, and hardcover. And so you're gonna think about it for just a moment. What three things do those things have in common? The correct answer would be books, notebooks, pocketbooks, hardcover books. Um, so hopefully you're waking up this morning. Uh, so we're going to get right into this. But I will tell you, everyone that's there watching with you, whether it's a brother or sister, uh, cousin, or like a dog or something, uh, get ready to answer these. Get on the edge of your seat. Really focus on these things. And uh, as soon as you know the answer, you don't have to wait 10 seconds or whatever. You just blurt it out. And the first, keep track there with your, with your person and text me or Miss Charity and let us know um, who, is, who is the winner of your family. So uh, do that. Make it a little bit of a competition. It's going to be awesome. So all right, so we got that. It's just the example. Let's move. This is for real now. So uh, this is for all the marbles. Here we go. All right, cat, sword, pike. Someone already got it. I already know they did. And some of you are going, what is the answer? All right, cat, sword, pike. The answer is fish, catfish, swordfish, pikefish, or fish pike, turnpike, fish, no fish pike. All right, pikefish. All right, good, good. I don't know all these, but anyway, here we go. Next one is football players, love letters, tic-tac-toe. I thought this one was pretty good. I got it. Hopefully you did. Miss Charity got it in the back. All right, what is it? X's and O's. X's and O's, you draw the little lines, that's where the football players are going. Um, or if you play tic-tac-toe, I always, cat always wins when I play tic-tac-toe, so 
beside the point. All right, here we go. So this is two in. This is number three. Get on the board if you haven't made if you haven't scored already. Time, stink, atomic. Stink, oh, Charity said teenage boys. That stink, teenage boys, teenage boys stink. Teenage boys atomic, teenage boys time. All that actually would work, I think. So anyway, but bombs is the correct answer. All right, moving on to the fourth one. A nail, a car, a golf ball. Yes, Tristan, I heard you. I heard you had the correct answer there. This one's actually kind of difficult. They're driven. A nail is driven, a car is driven, a golf ball is driven down the, the uh, I almost said driveway, but it's not driveway, so. All right, here's the next one. Sour foot post-it. Sour foot post-it. This one's a little difficult. Sour foot post-it. Everybody's already got it. All right, good job. Okay, notes. Sour notes, footnotes, post-it notes. I've never received a sour note. Maybe that's just because I'm such a sweet person. I don't know. But uh, sour notes, footnotes, post-it notes. Hopefully you got that one. Moving on. Apple Computer, Moses Drug Companies. Apple Computer, Moses Drug Companies. All right, let's see. I can see the wheel. Some of y'all, I can see the wheels are spinning. Wheels are turning, but the hamster's dead up there. But uh, you can pull this one out. Correct answer is tablets. Apple Computer Tablets, Moses Tablets, Ten Commandments, and drug companies, they sell their pills and tablets. Good. I know some of you got that one. Some of you are like, I, don't, I didn't get this one yet. But All right. Rope, rug, heart. Rope, rug, heart. I don't know. Maybe like tug of war, something like that. Good job, Isaiah. I know you've already said this one, so here we go. See if you're right. Rope burns, rug burns, heart burns. I have had... All three of those, actually. I don't know which one hurts the worst. Probably heartburn. So I had my appendix taken out when I was 14 years old. And wow, that was, or maybe I was younger than that, but I think I was 14. And uh, man, I was chugging the Maalox and the Pepto-Bismol. It was rough. So all right, moving on. <laughs> Power spinal bungee. Power spinal bungee. No, I'm not like weird where I'm just like shouting out three random things. These do have something in common. They do. Good job, Lydia. Good job. Power cords, spinal cords, bungee cords. I think the guys are ahead right now. Every guy at their family is winning because guys are just always better than the girls. Just kidding, just kidding. All right, next one is home email Gettysburg. Home email Gettysburg. This one's easy. All of you should have this already, especially you techno people. The correct answer is... Addresses, home address, email address, Gettysburg address, four score and seven years ago. Three score or four score? Four score. Good. I have my uh, fact checkers in the back. Gettysburg address, fantastic. All right, this one I think is one of the last ones. A year, a mattress, which I think is misspelled. I think it's supposed to be two T's, but that's okay. I'm from Arkansas. Bear with me. A year, a mattress, or a trampoline. Hmm... This one's a little bit difficult. You gotta kind of think outside of it. But we're in it, it's a hint. We are in it right at this very moment. We are in it. Springs, a year has spring, a mattress has springs, and a trampoline has springs also. So um, here's our, well, I shouldn't have given the tiebreaker away yet. If you are on, maybe you haven't gotten this far yet, um, and everyone's all tied up, no one's declared a winner, here's our tiebreaker. Hopefully you didn't see it a second ago and already know the answer. Here it is. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the first word. Obstetrician, obstetrician, I'm gonna just say that. A mailman and dominoes. This one is a little bit difficult, but that's why it's a tiebreaker, so. Hmm, I think you got it. Ready? They deliver, they all do. And if you're wondering what the first word is, it's somebody that delivers babies. So it's like a OB for the OBGYN part, so. Anyway, some of you guys are like, I don't know what that is, but that's okay. You will eventually know. But they deliver. All right, so here we go. We're going to uh, hopefully you, the correct person won that. Hopefully you got all the answers right. But we're going to go ahead and sing our song for today and then get into our lesson. So we're going to sing our song. So go ahead and stand up. Everybody stand up. Get ready to sing out nice and loud. Hopefully I didn't blow your eardrums out. 
All right, so we're going to sing Walking in the Light of the Lamb. And this first one, actually the first two are going to be some uh, coronavirus versions of this song. It's a great day to be alive. Um, if you're not alive, then I don't really ha know what to tell you, um, but you need to get that checked out, okay? So we're going to sing this one out. It's a great day to be alive. Sing it out with a smile. Here we go. It's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. Walking in the light of the Lamb. Walking, 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 walking in the light. Walking, 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 walking in the light. Walking, 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 walking in the light. Walking in the light of the Lamb. All right, and this next one we're going to do is the COVID-19 version 2.0. So we're going to get that one pulled up here. I got it here. All right, so it's a great day to wash your hands. If you haven't washed your hands, please go wash your hands right now. We did a video last time about how to wash your hands. You can sing this song while you're washing your hands, and it'd be a fantastic thing. So let's go ahead and sing this one out. It's a great day to wash your hands. It's a great day to wash your hands. It's a great day to wash your hands. Walking in the light of the Lamb. Walking, 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 walking in the light. Walking, 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 walking in the light. Walking, 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 walking in the light. Walking in the light of the Lamb. Next one. It's a great day to love the Lord. 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 Walking in the light of the Lamb. Walking, 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 walking in the light. Walking, 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 walking in the light. Walking, 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 walking in the light. Walking in the light of the Lamb. Now get really into this one. Uh, if you're not already standing up doing this with me, then you need to stand up right there. Go ahead, Jake. Go and stand up there. That'd be good, good, awesome. All right, let's sing this one out. It's a great day to serve the Lord. 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 Walking in the light of the Lamb. Walking, 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 walking in the light. Walking, 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 walking in the light. Walking, 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 walking in the light. Walking in the light of the Lamb. Fantastic. You guys did great. Go ahead and give yourself a big pat on the back. I would say you could pat your neighbor on the back, but then, guys, you might get hit by your sister, and I don't want that to happen. So, all right. We're going to go and get started today. Um, last week, we talked about what does salvation mean to me. I hope you're able to memorize John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Uh, fantastic verse, one of the first verses I ever learned. So I know that one will be a blessing to you. What an amazing verse. Um, and then hopefully you got to write out your testimony and you can kind of look back on that. Next week, we're going to start talking about assurance of salvation. And I know that's something that as a teenager and no knowing other teenagers around me, it was something that really people really struggled with doubting their salvation. So we're going to spend some time on that next week. And uh, I hope that you, it'll be a blessing to you and hold on to your binders. I know all of you have a binder there. Um, so fill out the answers. Don't like let your dog suck on the paper and get it soggy and then eat it and then do whatever else with it it does. Uh, but keep it in a good place. So that way 10 years from now, 15 years from now, you might have a child or know a friend or something that's struggling with the assurance of salvation. You can go back and look through these verses. Uh, it'll be a blessing to you. But today we're going to talk about what does God expect of me? What does God expect of me? And remember, we talked last week, kind of started out, salvation is the beginning of the Christian life. It's the beginning. Uh, it's like whenever, if I was to walk from this side of the room over here to this side of the room over here, if I was to, the first step would probably be opening the, the door and stepping in. And then, what does that just magically send me to the other room over there? No, or the door over there? No, it doesn't do that. I have to like take a step, take another step, take another step, and eventually I'll get to the other side of the room. And it's the same way spiritually. We take that first step of salvation and then we don't just stop right there, but we continue to grow. And so what does God expect from me? Remember, salvation is the beginning of the Christian life. And now that the beginning is over, hopefully you're saved and you've already got your salvation settled and you know you're on your way to heaven. Now what do you do from here? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So go ahead, take your Bibles. I've got the verses up here. Uh, I do. Oh, hopefully that's going to work there. Uh, but I do have the verses up there. Go ahead and turn to John chapter number 3. John chapter number 3, verses 1 through 8. John chapter number 3, verses 1 through 8. And we'll start reading on these. John chapter number 3, verses 1 through 8. We kind of looked at them last time. 
But here we go. Uh, John chapter 3, verse 18. Look at the screen if you don't have your Bibles there. Uh, the Bible says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Truly, truly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth... Sorry, let me get you caught back up here. The wind bloweth... Where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and wh- whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. So, a very important passage. We know verse 16, maybe through 18, uh, talking about for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so, we're going to look at this right here as we look at those verses. According to the Bible, another term for becoming a Christian is to be what? Let's look at verse number, uh, uh, verse number six. It says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Verse number three, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Remember, he's trying to explain this to Nicodemus, and Nicodemus is like, Am I going to have to, can a man go back into his mother's womb and be born a second time? And Jesus is like, No, 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 Nicodemus, this, that's not what I'm talking about. In John chapter number 3, verse number 6, it talks about that which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. John 3, 6 teaches two births, a physical birth and a spiritual birth. Hopefully everyone in here has had their physical birth. You have your birth certificate um, and you're alive physically. But this second birth, this born again he's talking about is a spiritual birth, a spiritual uh, being born again. Um, if you look at this next verse here, uh, 1 Peter 2.2, 2, if you'll flip over there here. The Bible says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. As a new Christian, what is the scripture liking you, liking you to? Right here, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. The Bible says that somebody who is a new Christian is a newborn babe. A newborn babe. And it's interesting here, it talks about that they desire the milk of the word to grow thereby. Let me get back to this verse here for you. As a newborn babe, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. It's talking about as you are a newborn babe, the next little thing there is a comma, a a break in the sentence. So as newborn babes, babies desire the sincere milk of, of, I guess, of their mother or of this like a, uh, I guess, like a baby formula or something. Uh, that's what the, they don't come out eating a steak. That would actually be kind of cool, but um, it doesn't happen that way. They start out with drinking milk, and then they kind of eat this weird stuff that's like baby food that's like all mashed up, and eventually they, they get to eat stuff of glorious like ice cream, and they continue to move on until, until they can eat like normal food, and their teeth grow in and all that stuff. But newborn babies talks about somebody that's brand new spiritually. As a newborn baby would just... I mean, have you ever been around a newborn baby? What happens whenever it's hungry? I'm not going to do it because it might be humiliating, but what does, a, what does a newborn baby do? They scream and they cry until they come and they get a bottle in their mouth and then the world is, is wonderful again for them. And so as a, as a new Christian, the, Bible, the scripture likens us to a newborn babe. Uh, the next verse I want you to turn to, or you can look up here on the screen, 2 Peter chapter number 3. Verse number 18, and if you can turn to this one, this one, uh, I want to point out something in the verse before it as well. But 2 Peter chapter number 3, in verse number 18, the Bible says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus, or sorry, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. But to grow, but grow in grace. Uh, So what does God expect from me? Well, hopefully you're saved. You've been born again. Hopefully 
if you're still a new Christian, you're just a newborn babe and you're, you're desiring the sincere milk of the word that you would grow thereby, uh, that you would just as a little baby would cry out and scream because it hadn't been fed lately. Hopefully as a newborn Christian, uh, as a newly saved person, man, you desire the milk of the word. If you haven't had uh, your dose of the word of God lately, you just scream and you cry out for it. Uh, maybe not necessarily physically, although I guess that would work too, uh, but you desire that. And, but if a baby continues to desire the, the, the milk and as a Christian, you com- continue to desire that milk just as a physical baby, what happens to it? Does it just stay the same size? No, it, it begins to grow. Uh, it gets taller. It's, it's, it starts to, like its teeth start to come in. Uh, it starts to grow. You can see a change in its life from a little baby until 23 years later, like in my case. I hope I don't look like a little baby and, and scream and cry. And uh, I mean, that would just be kind of weird. But you expect a little bit of growth there and hopefully a, a lot of growth after 23 years. Um, but what does God expect from you? It says, but grow in grace. Look at verse 17. It says, ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, uh, beware, lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. Hmm. So he says, beware of this. Beware lest you be being led away well, with the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace. So obviously God does not want us to fall from our steadfastness. He doesn't let us, want us to be led away with the error of the wicked, but he wants us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I wonder why that is. I was, I was wondering, I'm like, well, what is the error of the wicked he's talking about there? And in this chapter, if you go back to the beginning and start reading it, it's very clear he's talking about people saying it, it, it will go back. It, just turn the page over with me. Look at verses three through five. It says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Uh, And he's basically talking about, they're saying, where's the promise of his coming? When Jesus isn't going to, the rapture, someone told you about that. That's not going to happen. They're saying Jesus isn't coming back. And what happens when it talks about being led away, being led away causes us. And when we're led away into the error of the wicked, being led away causes us to fall from our steadfastness, to fall from, from growing in grace and focusing on growing. God, what do you want me to learn today? God, what, how do you want me to live today? If Jesus isn't coming back, it's like, wow, well, no big deal. It was like whenever I lived at home, my parents would give me a chore list to do. Hopefully your parents give you a chore list to do. It's great. It'll put hair on your chest. It's a wonderful deal. Uh, but man, I, I remember getting those chore lists and my parents would be like, all right, we're gonna, we'll be back at like four o'clock. And this is eight o'clock in the morning. Maybe they had to go to town and do something. And I was like, man, I've got all day. All I have to do is clean my room, do my chores. And uh, we're supposed to do the dishes and uh, th- the two loads of laundry in the, in the laundry room. Ah, no big deal. And what would happen? I would get right on it, man. I'd get straight into there to clean my room and I'd be, no. I would maybe go watch a TV show. I'd go play a video game. I would just mess around. We had like this little, um, those little sponge balls that you can put in the, in the pool and it like soaks up the water and you can throw them at each other. Well, we had one and we'd have it in the, in the kitchen. And my sister was standing on one end, I'd stand on the other end and we'd kick it and try to score between the, the door posts there. And that was like an epic game for us. And so we'd play that for a long time. Uh, and we just play around until it was like 2.30 or 3.30. It'd be like, oh, we ought to do all these chores. And we're running around like crazy. And that's how we would be if we didn't have the Lord Jesus Christ coming back. But he is. But people are saying, oh, don't worry about it. It's not going to happen. He's not coming back. And so if you are led away from that, if you stop growing, um, then or if, if you stop being steadfast in that growth, you're going to be led away with the error of the wicked if you're, if you're listening to them. Uh, you can't do much as a spiritual baby, but what does God expect you to do? I don't expect a little bitty baby to get up and mow the yard or get up and clean their room or to, to get up and in the shower and give themselves give himself a shower. No, it's a baby. But what, does God want us to stay a baby? No, but God wants us to grow in grace, to grow, grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Um, go over to 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. 
1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. It also says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. And this wasn't like a good, good, like encouragement for them. This is a, are you serious? God's serious? I can't even talk to you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal still, even as if you're a baby in Christ, I fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? I remember even as like in middle school or something, and I would get into a squabble with somebody, maybe my sister, maybe just a friend. And then, man, there was always stuff going on. And as we matured, hopefully those things start to go away. Hopefully it's not a constant problem all the time, but you start to grow up, you start to mature. Um, and this is important. We're going to get to here in just one second. Uh, so what does the Lord call a Christian who doesn't grow spiritually? In the verses we just read, it says, are ye not carnal and walk as men? The Lord calls somebody who doesn't grow up spiritually a carnal person, a fleshly minded, a worldly Christian. Um, growing up, really, if you just want to boil it down, is knowing what's right and doing it. It's knowing what's right and doing it. Hopefully by this point, you guys are brushing your own teeth. I mean, I don't expect a baby to, to go climb up onto the, the, uh, the counter on the bathroom sink and grab their toothbrush and their toothpaste and put it on there and sing the song or hum as they're brushing their teeth. Hopefully you've learned to tie your shoes by now and you're not still having to have somebody else tie your shoes. Um, I have just uh, like shoes that don't need to be tied. So, I mean, that works too. If you're still on Velcro, no big deal. But hopefully you've learned, to, that you've grown up in some of these areas. Hopefully you clear the table whenever you're done and you and when you're done eating at the table you get up and you put your food up you help clear the table um, you start to grow up you know what's right to do and you just do it because you're growing up hopefully you clean your room on your own um, hopefully by this point you can start to smell yourself um, and if you smell you're like what's that smell and you're like oh it's me hopefully you you have learned by now that okay, I need to go take a shower, and you've done that on your own. But that's what happens whenever we grow up. There's some things that we start to know we're supposed to do. Oh, yeah, I knew I was supposed to brush my teeth today. I knew I was supposed to take a shower sometime this last week. And hopefully we're knowing what's right to do, and we're doing it. Uh, let's look at these verses right here in Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that henceforth we be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cutting craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So hopefully you're, you're noticing some areas in your life that you're growing up, not just physically, but also spiritually. Now, maybe you might just have gotten saved even last week or a week before that, and God's working on your heart, but I hope that you have a desire to grow up spiritually. So into what does the Lord want his children to grow? Now, there's a little spot down there you can put in your own words. Uh, you don't need to write this exact sentence on there, but you can kind of think about it. What does God want you to grow up to be? God wants you to be spiritually mature Christians who will not be blown about by every wind of doctrine. That's what that verse is talking about. He talks about that, uh, that, we, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, the cunning and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Have you ever been slighted before? I, I, I think of an instance just popped in my mind. I don't think about if, if someone slighted you. I, I think I slighted one of my friends one time. We weren't really that close to friends, but it was fourth grade. I remember just like this, this was yesterday. My friend's name was Dallas. I know his last name, I'm not gonna say it. Uh, we were in fourth grade and they're like watching a movie or something in school. And I collected football cards and um, he had a John, or it wasn't John Elway. It was, let's see, the guy from, uh, that played on the Dallas Cowboys. I'm drawing a blank. Um, Troy Aikman, that's who it was. It was a Troy Aikman football card. And if you don't know who that is, it's not a big deal, but he was a, a good quarterback for them. And I was thinking, man, this is a Troy Aikman card. And I was like, what, what would you like? Uh, I think we were taking benchmark tests at the time or something. And I was like, what would you, what do you want for that card? 
and um, I had donuts, and I, had my, I guess my parents had brought a donuts or something, and I was like, hey, I've got two donuts here. I will give you these two donuts for that card. Now, maybe he was just not very smart and just gave me the card anyway, uh, but the card was worth a lot more than two donuts, but I kind of like slided him, and I, I probably should call him or something, but anyway, carried about by every win of doctrine, by the slide of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. People will try to deceive you into believing something that is wrong, um, and so the Bible says we need to grow up, and that way we can, we can take care of that. I've got to hurry because I've got uh, I think I got like 10 minutes to get through all the rest of this stuff, but um, so let's just go ahead. I'm going to go to this part right here and uh, finish up the lesson on here. And that way, if I don't get to my notes, then that's fine. But at least you have every, all the blanks filled in on your part. Um, so six steps to, to Christian growth. And you'll see a pattern here in just a moment. But six steps to Christian growth. The first one is go. Go to a Bible-believing Baptist church. I hope, hopefully coming here, you've already got that checked off the list right there. Hebrews 10, 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching, uh, man, have the fellowship of God's people. Have the encouragement of God's people. Don't forsake assembling of ourselves together, as a matter of some is. The second one there is to read your Bible daily. We already read this verse. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. So read your Bibles daily. The Acts 17, 11 says, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So read your Bible daily, obey Christ and be baptized. His great commission, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. That was Jesus' commission to the church, to go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them. It's important to the Lord to obey him and be baptized. Uh, Acts 2.41, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. They got saved, they received his word with gladness, and they were baptized, and they got added to the church. Um, if you look at this next one here, witness. A step to grow spiritually and to mature is to be a witness to people. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. John 4, 28, 29 talks about the woman at the well. Uh, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and, and saith unto the men, Come, see a man which told me all things I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Um, so be a witness uh, in town, at school, uh, on your social media. Be a witness for the Lord. Um, thank God daily in prayer. This will help you. We talk about reading our Bible daily. Thank God daily in prayer. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Thank God daily in prayer. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Thank God daily in prayer, and honor God with the tithe. Matthew 3.10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall, be not, or that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Wow, what a promise of God, and a, oh, kind of a challenge. You know, prove me. Uh, bring ye the tithes into the storehouse, and if, if not, I will open you the windows of heaven, or if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that, you sh that there shall not be room enough to receive it. He's like, prove me. I, I will do this. I will bless your life because of that. And then 1 Corinthians 16, 2, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him that there be no gatherings when I come. Uh, so hopefully you've looked at these things. You might notice a pattern here. Six steps to Christian growth. We'll put them right back up here for you. To go. Go to a, a Bible-believing Baptist church. Read your Bible daily. Obey Christ and be baptized. Witness to others of Christ. Be a witness for him. Thank God daily in prayer and honor God with the tithe. Uh, so I'm going to leave these up here so you can fill in the blanks there. Uh, but I also kind of want to get uh, your attention up here. I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to scoot down here to the front here in just a moment. Um, but God wants us to grow and mature. And a couple of hindrances I want to give you, a couple of hindrances to growth. The first one would be not knowing what to do. Okay, honest, an honest thing, if, how, how does somebody know what to do if they don't know? How are they supposed to do it? They don't know what to do. The second thing would be knowing what to do, but not doing it. And we'll get into that here in just a minute. But those are two problems or hindrances to growth is not knowing what to do. I, I don't know what to do. Or knowing what to do, but not doing it. So I've got a solution to both of those for us. The first solution is to not knowing what to do. Get in God's word and ask him to teach you. 
Um, in John 15, 26, it talks about that the Holy Ghost shall teach you all things. Go ahead and flip over there, if you will. We got time. I, I have my clock set five minutes fast, so uh, I'm going to borrow into that time. Uh, John chapter number 15, verse number 26. Uh, John 15, 26 says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Uh, whenever the God sent the Comforter, that he would teach us, the Holy Spirit, he would teach us and guide us into all truth, that he would lead us into all truth. And if we just get in the word of God and ask God to teach us, he will show us all those things. We just looked at the verses there in Matthew chapter number seven, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. That's exactly what, what, what we can do if we ask God to teach us. Second Peter three, one through three, we talked about it. He says to the saved, grace and peace be multiplied through the, his divine power and hath, he hath given, or sorry, uh, be multiplied through the knowledge of God and that his I'm sorry, I think I might have read those wrong. Let's flip over there real quick. 2 Peter chapter number 3, uh, verse number 1. 2 Peter 3, uh, verses 1 through 3. The Bible says, uh, I think I wrote down the wrong, the wrong chapter there. I don't know what I did. All right, well, we're just going to move on from that verse because I have the wrong verse written down here. Uh, oh, I, I know what I did. I know exactly what I did. Here we go. 2 Peter chapter number 1, verses 1 through 3. 2 Peter 1, 1 through 3. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, our, of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. God has given to us in his word all things that pertain to, unto life and godliness. God knows everything you're going to face as a teenager, and he's given the answer right here. All things that pertain to life and all things that pertain to godliness. And so the solution to the first thing, not knowing what to do, is just to get in God's word and ask him to teach you. The second solution there to the second problem of hindrance to growth, knowing what to do but not doing it, the solution is to repent. The definition of that is to change a change of attitude that leads to a change of action. In James 4, 17, it says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is not good for him. No, that's not what it says. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. To him it is sin. Growing up has to do with prioritizing God above all other things. Really, spiritually, to grow up, you're prioritizing God, what God wants, God's plan, God's will for your life above all other things. To prioritize means to designate or to treat something as more important than other things or to, to designate or treat something as more valuable than other things. And I'm just going to kind of give a couple personal testimonies to, to get everything wrapped up today and hopefully draw everything to a conclusion this is where I struggled as a teenager, not just spiritually, but also physically. Uh, I didn't want to be disrespectful or to be rebellious towards my parents. I wanted to please them and obey them. But, and this is a big but here, the truth is I wanted what I wanted to do more. And that's what I did. Good intentions never did nothing, somebody said. Um, just because I wanted to do something, oh yeah, I, my parents had told me to go clean your room. They come back later. Why didn't you clean your room? Well, it's not that I didn't want to clean my room. It's just I didn't really want to do it right now. I had other things that I wanted to do. I do want to clean my room. I, I'm serious. I really want to do that, but just not right now. Um, and this is kind of where this is my this is my problem as a teenager and growing up out of that. Um, I knew what the chores were to do and how to do them, but I didn't do them. My rebellious actions had consequences for me and for others. For me, my life was less enjoyable. You're going to say, well, how is it less enjoyable? Well, not only because I got lots of spankings for that and probably should have got more than I did, uh, but I missed out on the opportunity to honor my parents then. 
and if I could go back, man, if I could go back, let's just say 10 years, I would be a teen, starting to be a teenager all over again, 13 years old. And if that was the case, if I could do it all over again, man, I would, I would look for opportunities to be a blessing and to honor my parents. I wouldn't just listen, wait for them to say, hey, Keith, why don't you go do the dishes for mom? Hey, Keith, why don't you go do this to be a blessing to me? I would be looking for opportunities to be a blessing to them. And I missed out on the opportunity to honor my parents then. And I, I have strained that relationship. My parents didn't want to have to get on to me all the time. My parents didn't want to give me a spanking, but they did those things because they loved me and my rebellious actions had consequences. But not only for me, but also for others. I know, that's kind of sad, but I know some chickens died because of my poor care. I remember sometimes I'd go out to feed them and I was supposed to have water to them and it was summertime and they'd be dead and I'd like go get one and I would put it in the trash can and, uh, and, and like pretend like nothing happened. And man, I remember some, some of those chickens, they died because of my poor care. Now, I'm not saying if you miss your Bible reading tomorrow or you miss church to go bowling with friends, that someone's physical life is gonna be over, that they're just gonna like be dead. But that might be their last chance to get saved. It could be. They might have been thinking, man, every time I invite Josh to come play ball at my house on Sunday mornings, he always says, I'm, I'm going to church because I'm a Christian and I love Jesus. Hmm, that would be a good thing to say. I'm going to church because I'm a Christian and I love Jesus. Not because that's what my parents want to do. Or that's what we always do on Sundays. But every time somebody invites you, say, well, I'm going to church. This is what I'm doing. Maybe I'm going to teen soul wing. I can't come. I'm going to a teen activity. And he might still be thinking, just listen to that weird brother Keith guy. Can't be the only reason he goes. I mean, by the way, are they even related? I mean, he calls him brother. He calls them brother. Um, he might not understand all that. But he's thinking, I need to find out what, goes, what he goes to church for. And you might be thinking, you might be sitting here watching this, and you're going, my, my friends don't think that. They don't, they don't think that at all. And that is or it should be a huge problem in our life. If you're saved... And, and people don't think, well, people don't think, I wonder, I wonder why, I wonder, I need to find out why he goes to church. I wonder why every time I invite, some, invite him to come do this with me, he always says, either I have to go to church, I got another thing. But our disobedience to growing up and prioritizing God over everything else is damaging to those around us. Uh, imagine if, well, imagine if I was playing basketball out with some friends and I walked over to the, to the, the, ta the picnic table and I got a big glass of lemonade and I was about to take a huge gulp of that. But my friend looked over and saw that somebody had poured some rat poison in that lemonade and stirred it up so you couldn't tell. Um, what would that friend do? Just sit there and let me take the drink and pass out dead? Hopefully not. Maybe he'll like run and like tackle me and the glass goes flying. Maybe he like comes over and like slaps the glass out of my hand right as I'm about to put it in my mouth or something. But he's like, no, 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 you can't do that because that's poisonous for you. That's going to hurt you. But spiritually... Our disobedience to growing up and prioritizing God over everything else is damaging to those around us just as much. Disobeying God and growing up and prioritizing him over everything else sets us up for an unfulfilled, frustrated life. Are you tired of trying to make your life work? You're just trying to figure out, well, well I just gonna need to do this, I gotta do this, I have to do that. And you can't, it's not working. It's unfulfilled, you're, 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 it's frustrating. And God is the only person who knows how to make life work. He gave us a book about that. God is the only one who knows how to make life work. And I'm going to come up here real quick and do just two, two quick illustrations here. And then, and then we'll wrap it up. So imagine I, if I'm just a baby Christian. And babies, they eat baby food. And this is um, some Gerber turkey and gravy. Man, that stuff stinks already. Goodness gracious. But as a baby, you... you eat this food, and you think it's fantastic. I mean, you love it. That's really gross. It tastes like nasty tuna. Ugh, that is really gross. Um, but man, imagine, I remember as a little kid, my Uncle Kenny took me to Taco Bell, and he got this Mexican, and he got Mexican pizza, and I haven't had this in probably like, I don't know, like 12 years or something, but I'm going to get a small bite so I can keep talking, but Wow, that is absolutely amazing. Hopefully it's not as disgusting as baby food. But an unfulfilled life. Do you think after eating this that I would want to even think about going back and eating this baby food? No, not at all. I would not think about that. Even if I wanted to be miserable to myself, I wouldn't do that. And this is Taco Bell Mexican pizza, by the way, so I just want to throw that out there. But why would you go back to eating baby food after you've had this? 
the same thing I want to ask you spiritually. Why would you go back to eating stuff as a baby Christian? I'm not saying that some of the stuff in the Bible isn't good for you, but why would you want to go back to just being a baby Christian? You know, I don't want to grow spiritually. I just want to just kind of exist when you could have the amazing fulfillment that God has for us. The second thing here, I'm going to put this off to the side. We talk about having an unfulfilled life or maybe even a frustrated life. Um, imagine real quick, and I know I've got to hurry, but imagine that this is your life. You've got all this time in the world. This is maybe each day. These are the unimportant things that's really, really small. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it's just the menial things you have to do. Um, hopefully, like you, even though it's like brushing your teeth and that kind of stuff, you still do that. Um, but stuff that really doesn't matter. I mean, like playing video games, uh, going to a sporting event. I remember playing basketball. I had basketball practice Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Games on Friday. And uh, I was sore on Saturday. I mean, like most of the week was spent on basketball. But looking back, I mean, I have trophies that I haven't opened in a long time. They just have dust on them. They're just taking up space. Uh, and I thought those were extremely important. But really, they weren't. And so... Imagine if I try to fill all that stuff in my life. I like, take care of all the menial things, making sure people think I'm cool. Uh, I, I care about my self-image and what people think about me. And then I have the big things in my life that should mean a lot. Maybe like the things like God and church and uh, the teen group and how you're in interacting with everybody, your family, your parents, and how you please them. Um, and you try to fit all those things in there, and it just it just doesn't work. I mean, I could try to try to make it all fit, but it's, I mean, anything comes over and touches it, it's going to all fall over. And so it doesn't really fit in the glass. But instead of having a wrong priorities, I guess, and that's what happens with us as if we're not growing spiritually and we just remain baby Christians, our, our priorities are out of whack. That's simply what it is. We, we value what we want over what God wants in our life. But imagine if you put all of those things that are really important, the big things in your life, in there first. And then you put... After you've taken care of those things, after you've taken care of your Bible reading, after you've taken care of prayer, after you've taken care of being respectful to your parents, all those different things and doing what they want you to do, and then you add in all this other stuff, it's amazing how that all fills in. And I probably should have tapped that because I kind of made a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. Uh, so all that goes together. What an amazing thing, just having the right priorities in your life. And there must and there will come a time in your life when you do priority checks. And I'm going to finish up with this. Graduation for me, graduation was a huge priority check moment. What's really important to me? What am I, what am I gonna do with my life? Um, and it was, a, it was a time where I kind of stepped back from everything that was going on and kind of thought about a big picture. Is this really gonna matter? I mean, I remember playing basketball all this time. I'm not getting a scholarship somewhere. I know you probably think I should have, but uh, when it comes time for your marriage, um, those are gonna be priority time moments where you have to do a priority check. When you become a parent, when I have a birthday, uh, whenever it's a New Year's, the New Year's rolls around, I kind of think back over the previous year, what did, what, what did I do last year that really made a difference? What did I do last year that mattered? Um, maybe at a revival or just as I get older, maybe when I'm 65 or something, looking back over my life, did my life count for Christ or is it just all vain? But at the judgment seat of Christ, we can't change anything. And you're going to have to give an account of your life, the actions you committed, the words that you said, the attitudes that you had. And God, you're going to have to stand before God and give an account of the time that God's given to you. And hopefully it's not just filled up with a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter. But I hope that you made the big things and the main things the main thing. And then let the other stuff come in where, where it fit. But make God a priority in your life. Uh, I think about the Apostle Peter. And uh, Jesus came to him after he had left, after Jesus Christ had been, had been crucified and rose again. Um, and Peter said, I go fishing. He took all those guys with him. And Jesus, they called him back up on, onto the shore, and Peter came up there, and Jesus said, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? And he said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? And he said, yeah, Lord, you know I love you. And he asked him a third time, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? And Peter was kind of smoking his heart, and he was like, Man, God, you, you, you know I love you. And I feel like sometimes that's how God is. He needs to, we need to put our name in there. Keith, lovest thou me more than these? Then these things that don't matter. Then having a nice car. Then thinking, making sure this person notices you or this person likes you or this person uh, approves of what you're doing. I mean, does it really matter? And so I want you to ask the question, whether it's sports, whether it's a future, whether it's college, whatever. Fill in your name. Do you love God more than those things? And really, that's what growing as a Christian boils down to. If, you're, if you want to grow spiritually, you'll go to a Bible-believing Baptist church. 
You'll read your Bible daily. You'll obey Christ and be baptized, identify yourself with him. You'll witness to others of the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll, th you'll thank God daily in prayer and you'll honor him with your tithe. Just your whole heart, mind, soul, everything that you have, you'll give it to God and make him the biggest priority in your life because God desires to have the preeminence and he deserves it. We talked last week about everything God did for us and what salvation means to us. Because salvation is so great and because what God already did for us is so great, why not give him the preeminence? Why not make give him first place in our life? And as the other things fall in, let him do that. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and dismiss in prayer here. And, uh, and hopefully you'll be able to go to the main service and, and enjoy the message that, that the Lord's laying on our pastor's heart. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for all you do for us. Lord, just thank you for the opportunity that we can look at your word, God, and that we can, we can draw application from it, God. You have the answer to every problem that we'll ever face in our life. And God, I pray that we would get this part right about that we are going to grow spiritually, that we are going to put you as the priority in our life. And if the other things don't fit, God, if sports don't fit, if this college doesn't fit, God, if this just activity or hobby I have doesn't fit, God, I'm putting you first. And if those hobbies come in later and you, you allow those to come in my life, then fantastic. But if not, God, I want to please you above all else. Uh, God, I pray that you just help us to have that desire and that be our heart tonight. And, and uh, pray that we'd go into the morning service, God, just ready to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you all next week.